Welcome from Padres. Today we're going to do some post-processing for the ultimate load fastener case using the results from our FEA model. So we've developed the spreadsheet before but this spreadsheet goes through and it does the ultimate load fastener calculations to determine if the fastener will survive the loads if it were not preloaded. So some properties we're going to need are the thicknesses of the joints and then screw head diameter and then we're going to have to determine our tensile shear and bending ultimate load allowables and then we have our knockdown factors specified here and then a force multiplier and then the loads that we pulled from our abacus model and so if you remember we pulled out loads for th for four fasteners here we're going to look at element number three so if we go into our CAD model here, this is element number three. I put in a fastener right here. So what we're going to need is we're going to need the diameter of the screw head so we can determine it with this value right here and then the thicknesses of our joints. So the top joint is 0.2 inches and then the bottom joint It's going to be 0.25 inches or a quarter of an inch. So we can take those values, put them in our calculator right here. So I've done that already. Now we can determine our tensile, shear, and bending moment allowables. We do that with a separate calculator right here. So the inputs are going to be nominal diameter of the fastener, threads per inch, ultimate tensile stress, yield stress. So we can get a couple of these properties we can get the nominal diameter from our CAD model. So we go through, we can open up our fastener right there and we can take some measurements. So I want to know the nominal diameter. So it's an 086 fastener, so that's the number two fastener. So we take that number, put it in there, and then we know it's an NAS 1352. So we can use this to our advantage because we can go to McMaster Car and get some other properties that we need for that spreadsheet. So, so this is the fastener we're using in that model. It's an A286 stainless steel fastener. And you can see here we can get the threads per inch. So that dash 56 means 56 threads per inch as you can see here. And then our tensile strength is given here is 160,000 psi. Our yield strength is given as 120,000 psi. It doesn't give us a shear strength, but we can determine that using uh, some equations. So we can take these properties, this data from McMaster Car, implement it in our spreadsheet here, and we can get our ultimate tensile, our ultimate shear strength, and then our ultimate moment strength for a fastener. So we take those values and we put them in here. I've already copied them in here. And then we have our knockdown factors. We can change these. And then our force multiplier, we're looking at a G load analysis, a 10 G load. So I put in 10 G's as the multiplier because this is a linear analysis. And then our component forces we pulled that from our abacus model and so we put them in this spreadsheet right here so we just take these values and put them in our calculator and then we can go through and determine our margins of safety so our calculations are the following we multiply our component forces by the multiplier and then we calculate our shear load ratio and then our bending moment ratio right here and then the tensile load due to the bending moment and then the tensile load ratio we take those values and we put them on a interaction curve and then we calculate our margins of safety as shown here in this case we looked at three interaction equations so we calculated three margins of safety whatever you decide to use for this case uh, 
really has got to be justified by data. So I don't know the failure criteria for this specific fastener, so I calculate three margins of safety. And so you eventually want to translate this to calculate the margins of safety for the other three components. So we take this, these inputs and these calculations, and we put them in a row and column format as shown here. So here's our four elements. So we already calculated the margin of safety for element three. So now we'd have to calculate them for four, five, and six. So we put them in this spreadsheet, ran the same calculations. We have our same inputs, which include the thicknesses of the joints. And then we have a gap specified here, which can change screw head diameter. And then our tensile allowables, because they're all number two fasteners, our ultimate allowables are going to be the same. And then our knockdown factors and safety factors right here. And then our first multiplier. And we pull in our component forces from our abacus model. And then we'd scale those based off the multiplier for doing a linear analysis. And then we calculate our load ratios. And then we eventually calculate our margins of safety using our interaction equations. And that's how you do it, guys. That's how you would set this up. And so we went through, we stepped through a real life example on how to do this, how to post process the ultimate load fastener analysis using Excel. And uh, so, guys, it's that simple. And I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time. Adios.